Hi, everyone. This is Heather Lawtonen from the Flourish Academy, where our goal is to empower, educate, and elevate you to create a life that you love through the art and business of photography. In this video, we are going to reposition a shirt inside of Photoshop. But first, please check out our sponsor, ymcamera.com, for all of your photography needs. And if you're enjoying these videos or you find them helpful, please subscribe, leave a comment, and share with your photographer friends. It helps us to produce more content. We are going to use a few advanced techniques in this video, but listen, if you're feeling frustrated with Photoshop or editing in general, you would absolutely benefit from a step-by-step -step approach to learning Photoshop from the beginning. Check out the Photoshop for Photographers course that we offer inside of the FA. The link is below. My friend Karen from Blue Eyed Pics recently sent me these images of a senior that she photographed and she said, I can't believe I didn't notice that her bra was showing in these images. So we're going to begin with the image on the left because that edit is going to be a little bit easier and more straightforward. And then we'll finish up with the edit on the right. So the very first thing I'm going to do is duplicate my background layer by pressing Command or Control J on the keyboard. Next, I'm going to use guides so that I can determine how much I need to move up her shirt. So why don't we zoom in with a command or control plus. Let's reposition that. Now, I have my rulers turned on. You can toggle your rulers on or off with a command or control R so you can see that happening. And then place your mouse inside of the ruler. Click and drag down. And what I'm going to do is set this guide just to the area above that I need to cover. And I had a series of guides here I had already used, which is why they all appeared. So let me click and drag one of those off so it disappears. I'm gonna click and drag that one off as well so that I can show you that again. Click and drag inside of the ruler to the bottom of the area I need to cover. Now I have these two guides that will help me position things. If you want to turn off the guides because they are getting in your way, that can be done by pressing Command or Control semicolon, and then those guides will toggle either on or off. Next, I'm going to grab the Move tool by pressing V on the keyboard, and then use my up arrow to move layer one up and actually, that only moves it one pixel at a time. If you hold down shift and press the up arrow, it will move it 10 pixels at a time. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I can see that I've covered the area in between those guides. Next, I'm going to add a layer mask to layer one by clicking the icon at the bottom of the palette. I wish to hide this layer. We've done videos on layer masks previously. If you are new to layer masks, I highly recommend checking out one of those videos. But essentially, layer masks use black or white to either hide or show portions of a layer. So what I'm going to do is over in my toolbar, I see that I have black as my foreground color and white as my background color. I'm going to press X on my keyboard to switch those. Now that I have black as my background, I can use the keyboard shortcut Command Delete or Control Backspace in order to fill that layer mask with black. Now all that did was hide layer one, but I wish to reveal or show only portions of that layer so we're essentially covering her bra with the dress. So be on the keyboard in order to access your brush tool. I'm going to press Command or Control semicolon to get rid of those guides. And my brush is a little bit too big, so I'm going to make that smaller with my left bracket key. I have white as my foreground color, which means I am brushing with white. And when I do that, you'll see that I'm revealing portions of layer one that are essentially covering that bra. And I'm going to brush over here towards her hair and we're gonna have to blend this in. So what I'm gonna do is just continue brushing and actually this area on the left looks really good. It's the area on the right here that's a little bit of an issue. So I'm just gonna continue brushing, maybe make that brush a little bit smaller and extend it. And now that that hair looks like it belongs there, I just have to address this line. So if I just brush with my white brush over that line, 
it disappears. Well, it doesn't disappear. We're just revealing layer one to cover it. I still have a bit of a line here. So I think what I'll do is make this brush bigger and make sure it has a really soft edge. And I can do that by pressing shift and the left bracket key to ensure a soft edge on that brush. And I just want to see what happens if I kind of blend this in. It looks so much better. So let's well, I have a little bit of an issue right here. Do you see that? Okay, let's zoom out, Command or Control minus, just to make sure we're heading in a good direction with this, and we can turn that layer off and on. And there may be a few areas that you just need to blend in the pixels so that it looks natural. To ask yourself, if you did not know that we had made an adjustment, would you be able to see? If you wanted to take this a little bit further because you are a pixel peeper, some type of perfectionist, you could certainly go in and clone part of the pattern to make it look a little bit neater. But personally, I think that looks pretty good or at least good enough. So let's jump to the other image and see how we're going to accomplish this because this is a much larger surface area to deal with. Let's begin by pressing Command or Control J on the keyboard, Command or Control Plus to zoom in, space bar in order to access the pan tool just so I can move that into my vision a little bit better. I'm going to use these rulers again in order to get some guides. So I'm just gonna click and drag down. There's one guide and there is another guide. So I know that this is the space that I need to fill. That just gives me an idea of where I'm headed. Now, when I was working on this image for Karen, I tried about 85,000 techniques. Okay, maybe three or four. I'm going to give you the one that worked the best and the fastest. If you have a different approach for this, that's perfectly fine. It was definitely very challenging. So the first thing I'm going to do is press M on my keyboard because I'd like to make a selection. So I'm going to click and drag. All I'm trying to do is get some of this pattern. Next, I'm going to right click and then choose layer via copy. So now if I turn off layer one in the background layer, you can see that I just have that pattern on layer two. So let's turn those layers back on the visibility. Next V on my keyboard in order to grab my move tool. I'm going to hold down shift, press my up arrow to move this up. But as I do that, I can see that this isn't going to work, not like it did in the previous image. And the reason is because we're losing the integrity of the shape. So I think what I do is maybe press up a few more times and then I'm going to choose edit, transform and warp. And I'm going to click and drag up until I can get that just about where I need it. And I'm not sure how this is going to look, but this will be a good starting point, and then we can make adjustments as needed. I'm just clicking and dragging up from these handles, these four handles, the two in the corner and the two on the outer edges. Press enter or return to commit that change. Of course, it looks ridiculous. <laughs> That's why we need to mask it. We're going to add a layer mask by clicking the icon at the bottom of the palette. I can see that black is my background color, so I'm going to press Command Delete or Control Backspace, excuse me, on the keyboard in order to fill that layer mask with black. Next, I'm going to press B on my keyboard in order to access my brush tool. And you know what? I don't think I need these guides anymore, so let's pre press Command or Control semicolon to get rid of those. I have my brush tool and I don't, I don't know where to start or what this is gonna look like. So I'm just gonna start brushing with my white brush over this black mask to reveal portions of layer two to see how this is gonna look. I know there's gonna be some issues with the hair over here. Uh, there are going to be issues matching up the pattern. We've changed the shape of it. Although actually I believe we are headed in a really good direction. So I can see there are some issues. Well, let's start with the hair on the right. Let's press X on the keyboard in order to bring that black mask back because I want I want some of that hair. So let's see what we can do. And then what happens is right here, we start to get the skin. Certainly you could use a select tool, but mm, that would take too long, at least for me. So I just pressed X again to get my white brush and I'm gonna make it smaller with my left bracket key and just kind of brush in there. Luckily, her hair is kind of messy and natural down there, so 
It doesn't look like it's a big deal what we're doing. I don't know if I want that hair longer or shorter. I'm just experimenting with pressing X on my keyboard and then brushing with a white brush and a black brush to reveal or conceal portions, excuse me, portions of this layer until it looks appropriate. I do see two issues that are concerning me. Number one is we have this blurry line. What if we made our brush bigger and dropped the opacity of it and brushed over that line just to blend in these pixels a little bit? You still, whoa, we're bringing in too much there. So I just pressed X with my brush so I could switch those swatches. I don't like the direction that's headed. I'm gonna put that brush I just did. I put it back up to 100% opacity and I'm going to brush over. I need to reorient myself a little bit here, which happens when you're doing a complex edit. And again, this is just a matter of, you know what I might do? I might come back in once I'm done positioning this shirt and clone this a little bit. In fact, I think that's gonna be the best approach here. Okay, so let's leave that for now. But over here on the left, do you see how the edge of the shirt is down here, yet it's up here, which clearly does not make sense. So let's click layer two, select the actual layer. A moment ago, we had the layer mask selected. You can tell by the box around the mask. I'm going to physically click layer two, edit, transform, warp, and what I'm trying to do is pull up that line up so that it looks like it could potentially line up underneath of her hair. And I think that that looks pretty good. Enter or return to commit. Let's do a command or control minus to back out a little bit and look at this before and after. And everything looks really good except this little bit of a line here. So let's command or control plus, and I'm going to merge all of these layers up into one by using just about every keyboard modifier. Command, option, shift, that's control, alt, shift on the PC, and then the letter E, and that merges everything up to layer three. Next, I'm going to press S on my keyboard to grab the clone stamp and make my brush a little bit bigger. I need to define a source. I do that by pressing Alt or Option on the keyboard and clicking to define a source. And then I can try to somewhat line these up. So we just get rid of that line. I am not looking for perfection here. If you are, I mean, I guess God bless you. I think that's not worth the effort. You could mess around with that all day long. And that did improve it over here. Let's press the space bar. I'm going to reposition this and look at the overall before and after. Again, I think that looks great. A few more slight tweaks and it would be perfect. I hope that you found this useful. I'll see you in the next video.